Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome friends from all around the world. We're really honored to have you here with us. If you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. A few days ago, USB-2 spirit bombers launched an attack on an underground Iranian nuclear facility at Fordo. Just before that, an American nuclear submarine fired dozens of guided missiles at various nuclear sites in Isfahan. Reports say that hundreds of trucks moved uranium centrifuges away from the nuclear enrichment site just days before the bunker-busting bombs hit. In this video, we'll also take a look at the B-2 Spirit's secret stealth technology. On June 21, 2025, a large formation of B-2 bombers took off from Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, all under total secrecy. What followed was a complex deception game in the art of war. Right after takeoff, the strike package split into two separate groups. One group flew as a decoy westward over the Pacific Ocean, heading toward known U.S. bases like Anderson Air Force Base in Guam or maybe Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean. Meanwhile, the main attack group of seven B-2 bombers, armed with massive bunker-busting MOP bombs, flew east toward Iran. This move was designed to confuse both the enemy and global news and intelligence agencies tracking the flights, diverting attention away from the real strike. Their mission was to hit Iran's most heavily fortified nuclear sites at Fordal, Natanz and Isfahan. The main force undertook a grueling 18-hour mission as part of a roughly 37-hour round trip covering thousands of miles to stay airborne the entire time. The operation relied on a series of precisely timed aerial refueling missions by KC-135 Stratotankers in international airspace, which was critical to the mission's success. To give you a sense of scale, one KC-135 tanker can carry enough fuel to fill 2,000 SUV gas tanks. It can hold about 20,000 gallons or 75,000 litres of fuel. There's also a separate fuel tank section specially designed to penetrate deep into enemy territory, about 6,900 miles, which is roughly 11,000 kilometres. In fact, the B-2 can fly twice that distance inside enemy lines, avoiding radar detection thanks to a rotary aerial refuelling system stretching all along the route. This extends their range to 12,000 miles with the help of the KC-135 allowing them to stay in the air for up to 44 hours, nearly two whole days in the sky, which is honestly an incredible engineering feat. The bombers crossed into the Middle East via routes over Lebanon, Syria and Iraq, though it's still unclear if those countries were notified. As the B-2S approached Iranian airspace, the mission entered its most critical phase. U.S. forces deployed electronic warfare tactics and decoys. Fast jets and jamming systems were positioned ahead of the bombers to confuse and, you know, blind Iran's radar and missile defenses. At the same time, American fighter jets and surveillance aircraft scanned the area for any threats, whether from enemy aircraft or surface-to-air missile batteries. Thanks to their stealth capabilities and those carefully coordinated flight profiles, the B-2S actually passed through undetected. Now, here's a look at the Fordow nuclear facility. It's one of the most fortified and deeply buried sites in Iran's nuclear program. What makes destroying Fordow so tough is the complex network of defenses, including six tunnel entrances leading to the underground uranium enrichment facility. The most critical parts, especially the enrichment infrastructure, are buried deep inside a roughly 200-meter-long tunnel carved straight into the side of a mountain. It's believed the main enrichment chamber sits right beneath the mountain ridge, hidden under a massive layer of rock from the tunnel entrance all the way to the chamber. The terrain itself adds another layer of protection. There's a gentle slope near the tunnel entrances that gets much steeper about 160 meters in, offering natural defense from top-down attacks. Here's the tricky part. If the enrichment chamber is at the same elevation as the tunnel entrances, it's protected by roughly 40 meters of solid rock when approached from narrow vertical angles of about 25 degrees a bomb dropped straight down or even at a 40 degree off axis angle as typically done from a high altitude subsonic aircraft wouldn't be effective here the b2 bomber was supposed to have to punch through up to 40 meters of solid mountain rock to reach its target To overcome this, the U.S. deployed six B-2 Spirit Bombers. 
each loaded with massive GBU-57 bunker buster bombs. These are deep penetration bombs designed specifically for hardened targets like Fordow. These strikes targeted the mountain ridge directly above the underground tunnel network and enrichment halls, aiming to break through those hardened layers and disrupt Iran's nuclear operations. The B-2S also hit at least six known tunnel entrances leading into the facility. Satellite images after the strike, along with weapons experts' assessments, confirmed that at least three of the four main entrances were heavily damaged. Large craters were clearly visible near these access points, suggesting direct hits and, honestly, possible major damage to the facility's internal infrastructure. About an hour before the B-2S crossed into Iranian airspace, a United States Navy submarine launched more than 30 cruise missiles targeting the Isfahan nuclear site. This coordinated attack from sea and air really threw Iranian defenses into chaos and stress, adding another layer of confusion to an already overwhelming strike. Around 2.10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, which is about 6.40 a.m. local in Iran, the main B-2 bomber launched two massive bunker buster bombs over the Fordo nuclear facility over the next 25 minutes. In total, 14 MOP bombs were dropped across Fordow and Natanz, tearing through the underground fortified complexes almost simultaneously. The Ismail cruise missiles struck with devastating accuracy, completing their mission. The B-2S then quietly returned and exited Iranian airspace just as stealthily as they arrived. This level of coordination, combining submarine-launched cruise missiles and precision airstrikes, really demonstrates the complexity and intensity of modern warfare. It's not just about firepower, it's about timing, confusion, and overwhelming the enemy's ability to respond. Now let's look at how the B-2 Spirit avoids radar detection. Unlike regular planes that use vertical stabilizers and rudders for steering, the B-2 doesn't have vertical fins because, well, any vertical structure would reflect radar waves. So, it's designed without a vertical stabilizer or rear rudder. Instead, it uses split drag rudders for directional stability and control on its flying wing design. Here's the catch. Unlike normal rudders, split drag rudders are usually less efficient at small deflection angles, which is why the B-2 turns very slowly compared to other military jets. The rudder consists of two separate panels that swing vertically in opposite directions. When the left split rudder opens, it creates drag that pushes the B-2 to the left, and the same goes for the right rudder pushing it right. Inside the cockpit, when the pilot presses the left rudder pedal, the left split rudder opens, making the plane veer left. The right pedal does the opposite. Moving to the belly of the beast and opening the bomb bay door, this weapon suspension system makes the B-2 truly formidable. Although the B-2 looks relatively small, it can carry about 80 Mark 82 bombs, each weighing 500 pounds. Yes, all 80 bombs fit inside this weapon bay, totaling around 40,000 pounds, or about 18,000 kilograms, of free-fall gravity weapons. Depending on the mission, the B-2 can switch to a rotary weapon system that lets it carry around 16 AGM-158 cruise missiles, which can cost about $1.5 million each. When ready, the B-2 drops these weapons, and the AGM missiles secretly open their wings to fly toward their targets, travelling up to 230 miles, which is around 370 kilometres. Here's how it works. Step 1. Bomb release platform. As mentioned, the B-2 flies very high. When it reaches the designated spot with perfect conditions, it releases the specialised Mayday weapon system. This bomb is designed for precision, and the altitude it releases is crucial for its path and effectiveness. Step 2. Targeting accuracy. The bomb has advanced guidance tech, including GPS and military-grade inertial navigation systems, which are satellite-based. Step 3. Trajectory adjustment. Guidance info is sent to the bomb's four grid fins at the rear, which can move in real time to correct its course as it falls under gravity. These adjustments are essential because the bomb has no engines to change its path. Instead, it relies on these movable fins and high altitude drop to steer. That's why the bomb must be released from very high altitude to have enough time and distance for precise correction. Step four, impact and penetration. The bomb, called the Massive Ordnance Penetrator, weighs about 30,000 pounds, or around 14,000 kilograms. When it hits, it strikes with incredible force designed to penetrate tough structures like bunkers. The energy on impact allows the bomb to bury itself more than 200 feet into reinforced concrete. 
ensuring the payload reaches exactly where it's intended. Thanks for listening to the end. Please follow X News Channel, watch upcoming videos, and support us by subscribing, liking.